Angie Martinez interviewed former First Lady Michelle Obama, Angie Martinez, a radio personality in New York, uh, who opened up about the selective hairstyle she wore in the White House. Michelle decided to straighten her hair as Americans were just getting adjusted to a black first family. Michelle felt Americans weren't ready to see her natural hair and that styling her hair in a more traditional fashion would not distract from Barack's policy priorities. Let's talk about these double standards that black people have to deal with when it comes to how we style our hair and dress compared to our non-black peers, Alicia. It's ridiculous. And all I could hear was the late, great Paul Moody when the hair is relaxed, white people relax. When the <laughs> hair is nappy, they are not happy. And if I was Michelle Obama, when he had this second term and he was lame duck, I would have wore whatever. I would have had goddess locks. I'd have had everything in my head ter second term. I would have changed my hairstyle so much you'd have thought I was Gabrielle Union on America's Got Talent. I wouldn't care who <laughs> said what about who, how, when, where, or why. You would have gone head, at you. And I would have given you, you, yes, I'd have given them something to talk about. So you, she was very nice and very kind to, to not do what she wanted to do with her hair. Uh, it's, it's just ridiculous. It's re we had the crown act and everything, so I wish she had taken more chances in that second term. Yeah. You wouldn't have minded if she would have gone to Angela Davis or Colin Kaepernick on them, huh? <laughs> oh, exactly. Not in the second term. <laughs> <laughs> it like, I think Alicia's right. I mean, first things first, let's let's give Alicia the props on the Paul Mooney reference. You know, you keep Paul Mooney alive and love you for that. Um, you know, it, it, on, on sort of the historical side, you can understand, right? Like, um, you know, this has not been a country that, that has accepted us. And through the years, um, we've had to work to, to, to gain acceptance. I hate, I hate even putting it in those terms, right? But, um, you know, it's it's more of a power dynamic. You know, people go to work in factories and, and wherever they go to work and they're they're sort of conforming with the norms of where they are. Um, we've seen this fight take place in a number of different areas, whether you're talking about sports and the NBA the implementing dress codes and Allen Iverson with his hair. Um, there's always this sort of pushback on something that's too black. Um, you know, to Alicia's point about Michelle and, and Barack, I do wish they had been more forthright. You know, I, I think I, I wish she had the the comfort when she was in the White House to be more of who she wanted to be. Right. It, it actually pained me to hear that 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 she wasn't that comfortable, because ultimately, I think what you see now is an America that actually would have embraced it and embraced her for it. Yeah, but uh, they probably wouldn't would have gotten a lot of backlash because of that. I can understand certainly why backlash she wanted for to breathing. Do that. <laughs> well, there's that, Dominique. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they couldn't even fist. Bump. Yeah, she got so backlash about for her. her arms. You know, I, yeah. I sometimes say that um, she couldn't show her arms. Yeah, that that you know, hair is a black woman's burden. I say that people get mad at me, but we should have the freedom that everybody else has. If I want to wear it straight in locks, if I want to wear it curly, natural, I should be able to do all of that. A weave, when we wear it, it's a weave. When white women wear it, they're extensions. Um, it's like everybody's policing our hair. And although I agree with that about how she should, in theory, have had her freedom, I think she made a wise decision because instead of having to hear Republican and conservative pundits opining about Michelle's hair. We were able to focus on policy issues and things that uh, we needed to get done for this country. And sadly, I don't think America would have been ready for that. Definitely not. It's, it's a no. It's a no. It's definitely a no. John. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I grew up with two younger Black sisters, a Black mother. I know better than to come on a panel and talk about black women's hair. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna sit out this one. But I, I mean, I, I'm just gonna. I, hmm. I was you ready know. for you too, John. I was like, what is he about to say? Because he is not a black woman, and he has no information on this thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna sit this one out because uh, you know. But I'm not white. Tammy, let me ask let me ask you this though, Tammy. If 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 we if we fast forward to today, do you think the country would have been more acceptive today than 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 during their administration? No. 
I don't think that the country is in a place today to accept black women in a natural state. And I say that because there are too many people who are still alive that <laughs> created these laws against our hair and then created this condition that we have in America about uh, black people's hair, not just black women's hair, but also black men's hair as well. There are black men who have locks. There are black men who have afros. Uh, there are black men who wear cornrows to the back. So uh, it's not just about women it's also about men and and so i don't think that uh, america is ready to see that yet no i do not i don't so i mean i i think part of it has been you know one our ability as a people to demonstrate excellence right um bald heads for men you know particularly like as, as an example men you know i i wouldn't have worn my hair bald 20 years ago 30 years ago um michael jordan comes along and it's more accepted yeah, I think yeah. the more examples that we have as as people that you can be excellent in whatever role you're doing, and we all know that we've got this unique style, right? The African American style. Do the excellence, but have the style, and it changes minds. That's why. That's what I say about you know the Obamas. I yeah, wish. but the problem is here we go again. We have to be excellent to wear a certain hairstyle. We are so. so, so I mean, but what, you know, what I'm saying is that's still not your. You should accept those who are mediocre. Those who are excellent, those who are beneath uh, the level of a, of a, of an, a 100 percent. Well, I shouldn't their accept mediocrity, but I shouldn't blame your hair for you. Being we should mediocre. all be able to be Eric Trump. <laughs> Let's take a break on we that. We should all we'll have the right. We'll be back. <laughs>